Welcome to episode eight of the Coach's Corner podcast. Um, it's Brian and Coach Mo. <laughs> what up? Um, all right. So in this episode, Coach and Mo and I will discuss why coaches rather have coachable players and why being coachable counts. So if you have a player that wants to make that roster, uh, be a contributing member on a winning team, or even get into the game, you need to tune in now. That's 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 what it's going to be. So um, in this episode, we'll talk about why being coachable counts, what makes a player or parent coachable, uh, why being coachable can make the difference between making a roster and not making a roster. Um, and if you if it's something that you're developing, the skills you're developing is going to talk, we're going to talk about how to be more coachable. Um, about us, Coach Mo is an expert on why being coachable is important. And a lot of his accomplishments include, um, he has decades of coaching experience currently on the staff of the reigning defending <laughs> high school state basketball champions. And he works with a lot of those players individually to improve their movement and footwork on the court and, you know, basic basketball skills. But um, that's what the resume is. So um, if you have any questions or anything, hit us up. Check out our website, uh, gotbounce.net. Very simple. That's a simple way to go. Pretty so um, we're going to get started on why being coaches and the by being coachable is important. Um, we'll get to you guys after the intro. Peace. Okay, y'all, we're back. So, before we get too far into why being coachable matters, because it's 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 a big thing. It's the different. Sometimes it's the difference between making the team and not making the team. Um, we do need to talk about a couple of uh, programming things that we got coming up, um, and you know, clean, do a little house cleaning on that stuff. Um, first and foremost, we have our dynamic handles camp that we're advertising right now. Um, if you follow the program. Uh, you've probably seen the ad on your Facebook and stuff. I'm going to tell you now, um, this is speed and agility work. Coach Mo has decades of speed and agility work, and he's combining it with ball handling. Um, and we have a session that teaches kids how to dribble for little littles. And we're going to do that for about an hour because that's about the, the attention span. Right, Coach Mo? Yeah, let's see. Right about, right about an hour, we start losing a little bit of uh, those kids a little bit. And then – we're going to go right into our intermediate and advanced stuff. And you're going to see more advanced ball handling stuff. And then we are big proponents of putting it into action. So when you say it, when you see the flyer and it says in the scrimmages, that's exactly what's going to happen. Coach Mo is going to teach the skills and then we're going to put it to a test and some uh, scrimmaging uh, things and let them play and let them run and put those skills in motion. Um, the idea is, uh, the dynamic handles camp is going to be the first of a series of camps that we run that talk about speed and agility in the context of youth basketball. Um, and so this is going to be step one and we're going to have multiple camps that follow along the same line. But I'm saying all that to say this roster space, uh, space is very, very limited, especially with some of the directed health measures that came down. We're going to be in compliance with it. We're saying mass are required just because that's what we got to do. But space is limited. Um, and so you need to sign up sooner. If you're, if you're listening to this, sign up right now. Um, it's on Halloween. <laughs> um, the little kid session starts at 2, goes till 3. And then from 3 on, it's going to be uh, the intermediate and advanced ball handling stuff. Um, you can attend all. If you attend all of it, we'll just put you in for the price, you know, the price point of the intermediate and advanced pay up and you can attend all of it. Uh, you can treat the little kid one like a warm up. Um, but if you're if you want to skip that and just come in, you can just come in and attend the three to five session. Um, it's at. Oh, we'll be over at Abide Church. Bye uh, church. Um, otherwise known as better together, right? Better together. Yep. Um, and so it's going to be over there. Um, and we'll have directors. I think I'd say the north. I think they told me it's like the northeast corner over the uh, gym. But it does have a sign that says gymnasium. It'll take you. It'll take you right around to the and just come through the front doors and. Yep. We'll greet you. Yep. And it's thirty two twenty three North Forty Fifth Street, Omaha, Nebraska six eight one zero four. Like I said, we're going to be starting there. Uh, we're going to be starting at two and going till five. Uh, the two o'clock session is for the little kids. 
Um, and that's going to really teach them. When we say learn to dribble, that's exactly what it is. It's going to be taking kids that don't know how to dribble and teaching them the basics of ball handling stuff. Um, this is building into something bigger that Mo and I are excitedly talking about, but we ain't going to spill all those beans yet. <laughs> um, but that's really what it is, and that's, that's what we got coming up. Additionally, basketball season is coming up. Academy session, academy is rolling. Um, we've got our place locked in for the rest of the year, and we're really adding, we're going to be adding locations. Yep. But right now we do have our place set up. Um, academy is going to be, you know, academy is um, if you are a basketball player who's looking to get that edge. You know, academy, in recent years, there was always a team. You know, there, every kid that came in academy had a team. We're not doing that this year. We have our seventh and eighth grade teams. But if you're a sixth grader who has the skill to play, you might find us a home on our seventh grade team, but you got to come out and be a baller because those kids aren't, those kids aren't here to play around. They're here to win games. Um, so we're basically opening it up. Um, and you got to make a commitment like any other team. Um, but right now we are filling a seventh and eighth grade roster. Uh, if we get enough kids, we can add teams, but we're not going to roll team. We're not going to roll a team until we have uh, at least 10 committed players for that team. Um, but Academy allows you, if you play for another team, we have kids that play. For, let's show that. What are some of the other organizations we have kids that, that, that play for? We, so we, have, we have kids that play for OSA. We have kids that uh, play for uh, T&E, Hoop Dreamers, um, Team Factory. Um, a lot of kids will drop by and um, play for us, and we, we just appreciate it. And so, like, like Brian said, you don't have to play for our team to get some skill work. Skill yeah. work. We, we – I, I feel that we do it for the right reasons, and ours is to help that kid get to the next level. And like uh, I think last night session uh, was a prime example where we had just different kids. We have a kid actually going to Archbishop Bergen. <laughs> you know, they they come down and uh, shout out to Alec who, who's come to everything, and he comes out and uh, we just do skill work. We can we compete. We do skill work. Um, and it, it is fun, and it, it's something they can use in their tryouts. Something they can use on daily day basketball stuff, and it helps them advance. So. We're saying all that to say this. You don't have to belong to an academy team mm-hmm. to be in basketball academy. This is a place where you come to refine your your skills as a basketball player. And so that's really what academy is about. Um, and, you know, sign up, um, you know, for the season. We, we, we've we rolled back some of our pricing for 2020, um, you know, just because we know that times are hard for people. And so we rolled back some of our pricing um, to get you in. If you come in um, at the price point now, you're going to be grandfathered in, and that's going to be the price. That's going to be your price point until you decide until you decide to not come to academy anymore, which we hope is um, around the time you're 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 the night before you're you're about to accept your offer. <laughs> and even so, because that's because <laughs> that those that's what we're that's what we're working towards, and so we have some major things coming up. We're going to have some major things uh, we're building around academy that's going to be coming up in 2021. Uh, we're having some good conversations with people um, and some of the big players in town. Um, we have we have a real grand vision for Basketball Academy. And right now, you can be on the ground floor of this thing. Um, and that's what Academy is. We It's a place where it's a school where you can come to get better at basketball. Period. And um, that's what's going on. So... Come and check us out at Academy. You're going to find the link for the dynamic, dynamic handles training. Uh, speed plus agility equals dynamic, plus ball handling equals uh, dynamic handles. You're going to find the link for the uh, dynamic handles training in the show notes. And Basketball Academy, get in. Get, get to, in. Man, that dynamic handles thing is going to be good. And I, you know what? As I sit around... Some of y'all need to get in there. I'm, I'm calling some people out. I'm trying to be nice, but some of y'all can't dribble. Yeah. <laughs> some, of y- some of y'all can't dribble. Some of y'all just tall. And, so, <laughs> and when we're talking about advanced, when we're talking about intermediate to advanced, that next level, that next group is going to be some advanced level stuff. So even if you're a beginner player, you're going to come in and you're going to get a glimpse of what some advanced dribbling stuff is. You're going to, and we're going to leave you with drills to take home. Things right. to practice, so that, I, that's why we're pushing it so hard. I give you an example. We're gonna have you, you know, we're gonna have you try to beat traps. Yep. We're gonna have you. Uh, how do you beat a press? You know, with your dribbling. How do you, you know, um, how do you get? How do you move in and out of uh, of a, uh, you know, in and out of a two three zone? Do you? I mean, do you pass out of it? Do you shoot out? We, we talk about some game time stuff, but it's gonna be 
It's going to be full speed, action, time dribbling, contest. And then guess what we're going to throw in there? We're going to throw a scrimmage in there. We're going to throw a scrimmage and play. And, and we're going to see it. And we're going to have coaches there to call timeouts and slow you down and say, what did we just work on? You know, mm-hmm. and so it's not – it's not going to be a free-for-all. It's going to be re- really helping you advance in your game. So the link is going to be in the show notes for the Dynamic Handles training. Um, sign up. We're only taking online registrations. We will not take money at the door. Um, and, I mean, to be honest with you, we're only going to take money through the, the sign-up link. It's not going to be anything else, but we're going to provide the link, and that's how you got to sign up uh, because we think this is a tremendous value. Um, and be honest with you, you know, Coach Mo's got to be focused on getting everybody ready. We can't be taking payments at the door and stuff. So sign up online. That's the only place that you're going to be able to sign up for this. Um, and that's what we got for dynamic handles training. Now, um, uh, we're going to focus. We're going to shift focus. We're going to change gears here. Um, one last thing. Um, you're going to be seeing, uh, before I get into it, uh, we're going to be seeing a revised and revamped uh, virtual training we have online training but there's some pieces of it that we needed to make a little bit more functional for our 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 clients and so uh i've been hard at work trying to figure out uh ways to make this role and so in the next week or so you're going to see some massive changes to our online training um you're going to start seeing some workouts migrate and you're going to get to you're going to see the we're going to be you're going to be you're going to be able to purchase these directly off the website so that's what i'm building out right now um the virtual training um, is great for if you have somebody, if you, the reason why you can't really come out to any of the live things, we don't want people to feel like they have to show up uh, to all these live things if they're not comfortable. So we want to give you some uh, virtual workouts uh, that are basketball centric uh, to help get you ready for the season. So, um, and then other speed and agility work and other workouts based on uh, attaining fitness while at home. So, we're revamping the entire our entire delivery model with our virtual training, and you're going to be seeing that on the website within the next week. I'm giving myself a deadline. Next week, we're gonna have you're gonna start seeing the first couple of trainings on there, so you can buy them. We'll keep them in a low price point so you can get in. But um, we think that it's important to keep moving even while we're social distancing. So um, that's the last component I want to talk about. Um, we're going to jump into why being coachable matters. We're going to take a pause for the cause. The links are all in the show notes, um, for all the stuff we talked about. So take a pause for the cause. And then we're jumping right into this coachable thing. Peace. Hey y'all, it's Brian. Um, wanted to take a quick pause for the cause to tell you guys about anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. So I'll kind of explain what I mean by that. Uh, First of all, it's free. There's no startup costs. Um, Your equipment costs or you need your phone and you can get started. Um, It gives you all the tools you need to record your podcast and edit your podcast right there on your phone or computer. So you don't need to download any additional software or anything like that. It does everything internally. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all kinds of other places. And it allows you to make money with your, from your podcast with no minimum listenership. A lot of times when you start a podcast, before you could even run ads, you have to meet certain thresholds. And Anchor doesn't do that. It um, allows you to run ads from your podcast uh, pretty much immediately. And it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And that is very powerful when it comes to speed. Now, if you want to get started, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Um, I, If you're looking to get started today, Anchor is the way to go. That's the bottom line. So thanks for listening. Back to the podcast. Peace. All right, y'all, we're back. So define coachable. What does coachable mean? When we talk about a young man or young lady being coachable or even parents uh, being coachable, what does that mean, Coach Mo? When, when we say coachable, what, what are we talking about? When, we, when, I, when I think of coachable, I think of is that, in a player's uh, uh, sense, is that player able to listen to, uh, listen to any kind of critique, are they able to, change their their ways of behavior if they're you know if they're struggling with something 
and they're able to do it with, you know, uh, giving you attention, looking in your eyes, actually make the changes, move on and, and get better, um, get better and improve what they were not improved before without any extra talking, without body language slumping, without uh, arguing with with me on the decision or the feedback that I'm giving them. Okay. So they are amenable to change. They, yep. they are willing to listen. They're good. Basically, they're coming in ready to be molded to be the kind of player that they need to contribute. Because how often do you get high-level players who aren't coachable, Coach Mo? How often does that happen? And we're talking about not just at 7th and 8th grade. We're talking about high school levels, too. You, 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 I'm, you honestly, and I, I don't know if a lot of coaches would agree with me, the numbers are actually bigger than I think. You're probably, you're probably about 50-50 right now. You know, because um, it takes one bad game takes one bad situation, one coach that doesn't agree with whatever they've been doing, and you start seeing sides of kids you've never seen before, and a lot of the pressure is on because the higher levels you play junior, senior year, if you want to continue to play basketball, and it, the ultimate goal for some kids is to go to college. And so that pressure sits in for some of them, and you start seeing a lot of them become uncoachable because of the pressures there because – now we're a little bit older, and the things that wasn't working um, for them or the thing they were getting away with, now they can't get a, get away with. So you're look at, the numbers are a lot higher now. Yep, and I think a lot of people don't understand the the general re, generational talents are rare. And we talk about generational talents. We're talking about players that are not only able to come in and transform a game, but they're almost like coaches on the floor where they help develop the coaches that are out there, help develop the players that are out there on the floor in real time. Those generational players are rare. And, you know, we're high on a lot of our kids, but not everybody's going to be one of those transformative generational talents where they can thrive in a team environment without somebody um, showing them and uh, kind of leading it. Or not even... In some cases, it's just the coach is kind of the manager of what's going on on the floor. They have a team that's so good where all they got to do is just go out and manage the energy and manage things like that, and they may not have to direct it as much. But even then, um, you see, uh, we we see a lot of a lot of players that haven't really. I'll be honest; they haven't done anything. Right. They have not done anything from a career standpoint compared to our, what our best players have done in our system, they haven't done anything compared to those players, but they think that they can come out there and tell the coach how things are going to be. And we're not just talking about coach Mo. I'm talking about, they go back to their coach and they're going to tell this coach how things are going to be. And they think that they are running things or directing traffic. And they haven't elevated that team to a championship level yet, but they think they're going to come out and direct things. Um, That's, that's, that, that's really what we're speaking to. Um, you know, it's not about bowing down before anybody or any other stuff, but it's being able to accept criticism, cr- accept critique and get better. Um, uh, a lot of people have unearned wisdom. They, they have wisdom that they haven't put in the groundwork to own yet. Right. <laughs> Does that make sense? Does that sound like it's, it's, they, they have the wisdom, they, they have the knowledge, but they haven't put in the groundwork to, to earn that knowledge yet. So they don't really know if that knowledge is true or false. Right. And, and, and for us, let me tell you to, to clear this up, we're not mad at you guys. You know, we're not mad at you players, but right a lot of coaches aren't mad at you. So we want to clear that up. Um, is there bad coaches out there? Are there coaches that don't have the right ideas in mind? Yeah, there is. But majority of us want you to be the best. And so we're not mad if you come in and you don't know any better. It's where I think we get more concerned. We don't say mad. mad. I don't get mad. It's, you, you, can't, you can't help yourself when you're mad. I say we're more concerned if you can't change. If you can't change. So let's say the... You've been dominating on your, your elementary and middle school level for years, and the first time you get to high school, you have a tryout, and you make the freshman B team. Mm-hmm. In your mind, you should have been on varsity as a starter and be a 30-point score a game. 
your practice and your effort didn't show that, <laughs> you know, and it showed that you were a freshman B player. And so that not saying that's a bad thing. I say you can't work there, you know, but if the coach says, Hey, in your tryouts, you didn't do a, B and C. We didn't see a lot of hustle, blah, blah. And your first response is, well, I was great in junior high and I did do this and I did do this. I did this. That right there is the first step of being uncoachable. Okay. And, and we're saying, cause coach Mo brought up a good thing. I want to build on this. It's not that you, we're not, it's not being frustrated that you didn't know any better. You know, you only know what you know, Yeah. but it's the frustration of not wanting to do yeah. better not wanting to be better. And once you find out and they're telling you, you know, that's when the argument has to stop. And that's when the body language stuff has to, in our famous word, the, the, the boo-boo face, the yeah. body, the shoulder something has to stop. And I'll tell you what, um, here in, here in the Nebraska area and surrounding tryouts and things like that are going to happen beginning in the beginning of mid November. And if you're still doing that, you still doing that. That's not a great start, especially if you're coming in as a freshman in the high school. That's a, not a great start. Um, the pouting, the it, 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 and we're not even talking about pouting in terms of I, I'm having a bad shooting game or anything. We're talking about pouting in, hey, the coach told me something that told me something, and you know, okay, case in point, my son is is nine years old, and we're we're working through this behavior right now where we correct him, and when we correct him, we get pouty, you know, act like we hurt his feelings act like everything everything he's doing is wrong kind of stuff, just from a simple, hey, man, um, can you go pick up those pencils, off, pick up your pencil off the ground? <sighs> Shoulders slumping, head down, tearful eyes eye start getting watery, like we, like we said something horrible. That's the kind of stuff, and at nine, it's expected. At 15, and it's your coach, and your coach is saying, Hey, you got to step into your pass. And you're slowly slumping. Exact, uh, given, basically giving your coach the same crap that a lot of teenagers give their parents. <laughs> That's where we're starting to drift into uncoachable. And we got to be real about it. You know, your coaches are not, well, I can't say it uniformly, but your coaches aren't your parents. In the context of a game, even if your dad is your coach in the game, your coach is not your dad. The coach is the coach. He's your coach. And you hear that, Ami? <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, you're, you know, all that, all that normal teenage crap that you would see teenagers give their parents when their parents are correcting their behavior. That needs to not exist on the basketball court. Then, because if you're talking about playing at a higher level, and that's what we're talking about, y'all, we're talking about what it takes to get to that higher level. If we're talking about your high school coach. And your high school coach says, hey, man, step into your passer. Hey, follow your shot. Hey, get your hands up. Well, coach, uh, that's the fast, that's the, that's the, that's a one way ticket. That's a fast way to the bench. Well, it's gotta, it's gotta begin somewhere. Yeah. It's gotta begin somewhere. You know, like you want to, I need a big picture. Um, the ultimate goal, and I think you said it earlier in the show is y'all to go, the signing day. If you if you want to be at a high level, you know, like most kids, there's steps to this, right? Yeah. Get this. It's I, I'll give you an example. The steps is um, most kids start off at the a place like the Y mm-hmm. when they're in kindergarten, first grade. You know, then they might move to a you know maybe a select league in about third, fourth grade, um, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. You you get you start doing some possible AAU and traveling. High school you're AAU and you're playing high school ball. Well, here's the thing about high school. You're four years in, and within those four years, if this is what you're doing, you're serious about it, you're looking to go play ball at a D1, D2, D3, NA, NAIA, wherever at this point. Now, to get to that ultimate goal, you may have to go out of town. And I give you this. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm a coach in North Carolina and you are here in Omaha, I don't know if I want to take on your attitude being so far away from your family and friends if you never corrected it from freshman year to senior year. And so when I'm recruiting and I'm asking the coach and I'm asking the other players, how does, you know, how does so-and-so respond to being down by five in a game with two minutes left? 
Uh, well, that's when we see our. That's when we see him just kind of turn his back on the coaches and just kind of walk away and start shooting his own shots. All right, red flag. Okay. So there's a red flag there. Not saying you're not a great player. Not saying we never got frustrated with our coaches, but when your body starts acting going the one way and the team starts seeing it, the coaches at your high school level and your AAU starts seeing it. In good in good care, in good faith to help everyone out, I can't lie to that college. If they ask me as a head coach, you're like, I can't tell them, you know, he actually, he's actually a pretty good kid. He doesn't pout that much. The whole crowd is seeing you do this for four years. And it's going to be hard for you to get to that next level because no one's going to trust you to run their program where they're paying for you to be at school and paying for your, your, your education and you can't listen to coaching. Right. So it starts, I, I, it has to start somewhere. So I'll ask you this, and it's a double-edged question. How many times, Coach, and I want you to be honest with me, how many times have you had to pull a kid aside and say, I am not your parents? Oh, many. Many times. Many, many times. Like, and, and it's usually it's usually my best players. Yeah, It's usually my best players in the heat of a game where I really need them, and they break down. Yeah. <laughs> or how many times have you said, okay, and this is the other side of the coin, how many times have you Okay, you know, in in non-game situations, um, you have a kid that's misbehaving or struggling, and they can respect coach, but they can't respect mom or dad. Oh, that's a lot too. So that that's where we're talking about. We need that on both ends, where the parent, where the kids respect the parent, and respect the coach in their respective roles. It we have a mis we have a we have a mismatch, we have a, we have an imbalance if a kid is able to come in and take coach. Basically, you know, tearing a strip of skin off of them for not paying attention and not being focused on the game, and they can accept that and correct it. But mom and dad say, "Hey, man, go pick up your room." <laughs> That's an imbalance that we do need to correct. And parents, we're going to tell you, you need to communicate that with your coaches. Um, uh, this goes into another topic that we're going to dive into here. Um, I think we're going to take a pause for the cause, but. I want to put this bug in your ear because going with the coachable piece of it for parents, we're talking about coachable parents too. Um, include the coach in on the consequence coaches want a lot of coaches want to help to make their uh, players good citizens too. And that's what a good coach wants to do. We're going to talk about this in the next segment, but I want to put it in your ear you guys got to start including the coach in when a kid is having behavioral issues too, outside of basketball. Um, and we're going to talk about why that's important. So that's what we're going to get into the next segment. We're going to take a pause for the cause and we'll be right back. Peace. Okay, y'all, we're back. So um, we want to dive into this and uh, forgive the language, but we want to, we do want to touch on this. Um, and we see it. We're seeing it manifest, and we've seen it. We've seen the same story play out, and everybody's seen it. Um, the player that was a phenom, that was this transformative player, the teammates loved him, and he or she was a complete asshole in all of the phases of life. And I'm not talking about just being a jerk to people. I'm talking about being morally bankrupt and involved in CD things. Um, and then the money introduced them to the kind of butthole that, that, that they really wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And they transformed into a monster and end up, it ended up destroying their entire career. Um, this comes from that imbalance we talked about where um, we're not including the coaches in on the concept of discipline, where basketball is treated like this, 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 this sanctified place where the kid is on their best behavior and then when they leave the basketball court, they use their status as a as a star basketball player to be a complete asshole to everybody that they come into contact with, and they try to get away with anything and everything. That's what we're talking about. So um, we talk about we we want to make that balance where the player uh, is taking the lessons they're learning from basketball in terms of accepting criticism and feedback and correcting their behavior, uh, and applying it at home. And the only way we get that is if um, your coaches are ho- helping hold the kids accountable. And here's the thing for your coaches out there that don't hold their kids accountable for stuff they do off the court. You're setting this kid up to fail. You send them to fail at some level. And 
We're not going to name names. We're not doing any of that stuff. That's not what we're about. But we've seen it too many times where a kid gets mollycoddled their entire high school career because they're the best player on the floor or in the district or in the region. They get baby. They get, you know, the coach never holds them accountable. Um, and people in their personal lives are like, this kid is spiraling. And the coach just keeps elevating them, elevating them, elevating them, and never enforces any kind of discipline upon them. And then the kid reaches that, that level where now they're accountable for their own actions and they're out of control. I'm telling you now, parents, be on the, way, be on the lookout for that. If you, if you have a coach that's reaching out to you and saying, help me help you and get this kid right so we can make him, to, make him or her into a better citizen, that's the coach that you want to invest time in. The coaches that don't care about what your kid's behavior off the court is, that's a red flag. You're setting this kid up to be a sociopath. Yeah. Um, you know, even at the collegiate level where technically it's not a lot of money flowing. There's no money supposed to be flowing around. There is access mm-hmm. and there's opportunities. And with, with expanding roles in European leagues, there's actually a chance, a pathway for a kid that's not an NBA target to have a professional career and have access to big bucks. Do not set this kid up for failure by allowing a coach not to hold them accountable. I, I, so here, here's from the coaching as, uh, aspect. I've sat on high school sidelines, AAU sidelines, uh, and select ball sidelines. Um, it's the little things like I, I actually had a parent. He wasn't on our team. He wasn't on our team, and we were playing. And it's, this is the, probably the, one of the weirdest things that ever happened to us. He sits on the end of our bench. So he could be closer to his son, who's on the other team, and was basically tell him to shoot the ball, to do whatever he needed to do, even though the coach, I could clearly hear the coach telling his kid to move and run the offense and was telling him to shoot and wave off the coach every time. This is at sixth grade. In sixth grade. I personally know the kid. <laughs> I personally know the kid. The kid is very, really struggling right now. Great player. Really struggling. He's struggling with being coachable because he was taught by his dad in a public in a public setting every weekend. You don't have to listen to the coach and what he tells you. Um, so I tell you this as parent as parents, and I'm a parent, um, and I have to bite my tongue too. Is I don't know, you know, I know footwork. I know those I can train you and those kind of things here. I don't know the game of soccer like down to a point where I've played uh, at a collegiate level or anything like that. So there's things that if the coach is saying to do to my son, for both my sons, I just have to sit back. Mm-hmm. I I can understand if he's hurting him or he's in a bad position and, he, you know, he never touched the, the guy, got on the field. Then I can say, okay, I obviously saw that. But there's things I don't know about. Now, if my kids tell me something different and they tell me why they didn't get a lot of playing time, um, again, I'm a coach. And they told me, hey, I was being a jerk in practice or I wasn't, you know, okay, cool, I can understand that. But I'm not trying to interfere in the middle of games. We have seen it a lot, and I said that's an example of that, but I've seen it even in that on our teams where uh, yeah, a, a parent is saying, shoot the ball, pass it. And the coach obviously has a play set in there, and I'm like, and you're looking. I've had to look at parents, I'm like, please stop, we're in fifth grade. <laughs> you know, please sit down, don't come over to the bench. Cause your kid doesn't, and I, I don't know. My kids are very close to me, and they look at everything I do. So if they, if they're looking in the game and they're looking at me, they're not focusing on the team and they're not listening to my coaching. And we need you, you guys, your parents, for every coach. I think every coach will appreciate this. Just let us coach. And if there's anything that goes on, you need to talk to talk to us after the game. Get twenty four hour rule. See what rule your coach has inside uh, inside there. But to do it in the middle of the games. Start creating the the start creating the base uh, and start giving start birthing this uncoachable kid, and that's where it starts in elementary school. Doesn't get corrected, goes on to junior high, doesn't correct it, it goes on to high school, and then that kid's wondering why he can't get in the game. Then he's wondering why he's getting pulled out. Then he's wondering, and they can be the best player. I, I've I've had kids that are on levels of D one kids in other states that can probably be, comp- uh, compete. And they're sitting at their, their warm up. I went to their game, and the parents are sitting there. I'm like, "Oh, the coach's fault. No one likes him. I should have transferred schools." And I'm like, 
Is he doing the same thing he did in second grade that you didn't correct? Yeah, but he's tall now. Mm-hmm. Okay. He can shoot now. Okay. But a lot of kids can tall are tall and can shoot. Um, if he's not coachable, no one wants to put him on the floor. He doesn't help the team, the coach, or, you know, or the parents. He's just kind of embarrassing himself. And understand this, y'all. Um, let's be honest. Your kid is on a team. Your kid is not the team. And so you sitting there trying to be directive and give directions uh, it, during the game time, it can conflict. It may conflict exact. It might conflict with what role the coach has mapped out or what the co- what the team actually needs your, your your player to do. So that's one end of it. The piece I need, the piece I feel like we we got to we got to nail down here is when we're talking about including the coach in on behavioral issues. Huge. If the kid's cutting up in class, that isn't an isolated thing. That can impact. Um, a lot of it could screw up their eligibility to even play. How many how many players, Brian, do you think we've lost over the years that we didn't even know that left because of something like that? Dozens, dozens Just didn't show up anymore. Yeah, and we come, you know, we sit down and have the conversation. Oh well, this kid was being a butthole, so we just yanked everything from them. Okay, I understand that, and that is always the parents' right. And a parent ultimately has that say to, to say, you know what, we're just going to cut everything and, and stop. The conversation that we would love to have, especially Coach Mo um, as the head of the team, um, the conversation we want to have is we want to, the ability to enforce a consequence. If the kid is acting up in school, we can enforce a consequence. So the coach, because here it makes it worse because the coach is there. They have their peers around them. This kid has to get a consequence in front of their peers from coach during their escape time, their basketball time. We've had, and I'll be honest with you, we've had kids in our academy that were acting like a jerk at school during academy when it was time to play ball. They did, they ran, they did all the running, but when it was time to do the fun, the fun stuff, they were sitting over on the sidelines doing homework. We can enforce consequences too. And so they get a consequence from us and ideally and hopefully they're getting a consequence from y'all when they get home. So we can give it a one-two punch, but just arbitrarily yanking all this stuff from this kid, it could set them up. It could set them up in a bad way. Uh, one, the coach isn't getting a real glimpse of what this kid's behaviors are off the court because we don't know because we're cut off from that piece of it. So we have no ability to address it. And the other side is, especially if your kid's playing for higher stakes, now those reps that they need to get in, the stuff that's not fun for them, the running, the conditioning, you know, the boring stuff, the stuff that's not rewarding for them to participate in, that's getting removed too. Um, And, now they're not able to perform at their maximum level when they when it matters the most, and it does hurt the team. This level, it's definitely level set. I hundred percent, hundred percent agree. And there's definitely yeah, there's definitely levels to it where you're like, um, yeah, if it's some, I mean, yeah, kid, kid sets, you know, is in class and he sets the classroom on fire. Okay, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a consequence that the school's going to give, parents going to give. Yes, or yeah, that's bad. But I've even had it where it's kid didn't turn the homework assignment in. I didn't know. Didn't know. Right? We didn't know. And all of a sudden, we don't see the kid for three or four weeks. And then I are asking other players, because they all know each other. They start, you know, your kids are on Instagram and Snapchat. And, you know, you know we ask them where their friend is. And they're like, well, mom's keeping him out because, you know, he didn't turn that assignment in at, on time. And I said, well, did he turn it in? Oh, well, yeah, it's turned in. Now it's been turned in for three weeks. And then I have a conversation with my mom. It's like, well, I want education to be first. And, you know, and I'm like, so do we. <laughs> so, and so does most coaches, because especially at the high school level, so do we. But like Brian said, now you have three weeks of reps he's missing from basketball, though. And so let us help you. Yeah. So we can, we can follow up with the teacher, you know. We can see if he's continuing to do what he's supposed to do. We can follow up, and and then we can have a, an appropriate uh, an appropriate 
discipline that we all agree on. I all agree on, but he's still, or she's not still missing the reps to get in. And I'll tell you, it was important now. It is competitive at the class A level for girls and boys. It is competitive. It, you're going to end up hurting your kid. And I'm going to tell you why. If you take that kid's rep away for three or four weeks from basketball, shooting, dribbling, being around a team, the person that he was, he or she was better than is now moving up because they didn't move, they didn't miss it. Not saying you're a bad parent. Let me clear it. You're not a bad parent at all. You just were asked you just involve the coach on these things. Let us know they had a bad night. Let us know their grades are in. Let us know they cursed their brother out. Let us know so we can talk about it and say, you know what? So today, since he cursed his brother out, like Brian said, He's going to warm up. He's going to go to the playbook everybody else. But now today he's going to sit by me. And he's going to sit by me and just watch everybody get their, their fun scrimmage at the end. And that, to me, as a player, former player, that hurts more. That hit me more because then I'm like, oh, I can't join my, I can't join my team because mm-hmm. of some mistake I did. I got to fix that. And I came back stronger. Yeah, I came back stronger and, and, and did that. But to say I'm taking the completely out, one, you may lose that kid. That kid may just not want to play sports again, and, you know, and it backfires. Uh, also, you, you may not just lose them completely. You might just lose their effort. Yeah. And if you lose their effort, now they're just being out there, and now they're hurting the team. And they're hurting the coach because they're like, my mom's going to pull me in anyway because I, there's another chance I'm going to get a bad grade again. Yep. <laughs> you know? So, And I'll say this. We can, you know, as a coach, you have the ability to look at a player and say, you're suspended don't come here. You're suspended for two practices. You're suspended for this week. Or what do you think hurts the most? Mom, mom and dad yanked me out of basketball or I got kicked off the team for conduct detrimental to the team. Yep. I got kicked off of the team because that travels, that stings more. And to be honest with you, we've actually, you know, we've seen it play out where, you know, this kid was a complete and total goon to anybody that they came in contact with. And finally, the, the coach just pulled the plug and said, you know what? We can do better without you. That kid was transformed. Mm-hmm. That kid was hurt. That kid said, okay, my behaviors do count for something. Because it's not mom and dad pulled me off. The coach said, we can do better without you. Uh- you know, here's a piece that we we probably haven't even talked about or notes or anything like that too. We spend a lot of time with your kid, and I, I think parents. I, I'll be honest. I hope you appreciate that a little bit. I appreciate that. I appreciate if the you know, like if my kids in any activity, uh, with any kind of sports or anything like that, that activity. That there's a lot of times with, with with the coach. Now I'm gonna tell you, your kids open up to us. A lot because they're around their friends, they're relaxed, they're around their parents, and there is probably a reason why the kid has those bad days. It may not even be you as a parent. It may be you know they just open up and say, you know, I'm not particularly liking the English class with the lady here because I don't like the fact that she teaches it this way. Mm-hmm. And he may not, or she may not have told you that, but as a coach, we sit around and we hear it. You know, even. Funny situations that we've had where kids sit around in the middle of a game and, you know, they're not super focused and they talk about who their f- favorite Pokemon is. You know, we don't get mad. We don't scream at them. It's like that when it's, you know, we're kind of like, well, maybe that's something that kid likes to do. Yeah. But let's talk about it and maybe it can help you. Maybe it's something that will motivate that kid is maybe if I get this six foot two kid some Pokemon cards and go out and get me 10 rebounds. That's things that we can, we can do. So we spend a lot of time with the kids. And so, if we're, they're cutting them off from being around us and the teammates where they can open up to and we can figure out what's going on, it can it, it end up hurting them. And then there goes another window of trust that they close off from, from you. Right. And understand this basketball. We, you know, the, we're talking about basketball on this podcast. That's what we talk about is enjoyable and fun to us. But I'm going to tell you, not every aspect of developing a basketball player is fun. And we can uh, coach has the capacity and ability to make practices really, really unfun for a kid that's acting like an asshole mm-hmm. at school. Yep. But you got to open the door and allow coach to kind of uh, include them in on that process. And if it comes down to it where you're like, you know what, we're just going to pull him. 
have a conversation with coach and let coach let coach even say, okay, I agree with you. Basketball is not where this kid needs to be right now because this behavior was too egregious. It was too big to allow to reward, continue to reward them for their poor behavior. And so I will kick them off the team for conduct detrimental to the program. And we're opening the door. They can try out next year. Now the coach is fully aware to be looking for this kid next year, but they're not going to be looking. They're not just going to, they're not just going to vanish. You can't hide your problems, parents. You can't hide, you can't hide a problem. And this, and it's one of the things of being a coach. You can't, I've had, I've appreciated every kid that has played on my team uh, or at some point in their life. I've had kids that have been with me since preschool that still come back and still come back even in high school and do our training, do our camps, do our tryout trainings, do that kind of thing. They still come back. And they will say, and the parents will say, I am glad you always were fair and did what you said you're going to do and we communicated. Those kids are going to be successful. Not just in sports, just life and in general, because they're like, they take responsible for their actions. There's always communication with the coach. There's always communication with, you know, parents, teacher, and those kind of things there. It's the ones that that think they can team hop and say, you know what? I'm going to, this coach, you know, you know, I'm not going to tell him what's going on, or, or, or I am going to tell him. If he doesn't agree, I'm just going to take him and take him, take him, take him. Well, parents, when you're doing that, that you're teaching that kid first. You're teaching that kid not to respect the next coach. Mm-hmm. You're teaching him not to respect the teacher. You're teaching him not to respect because you're saying it's okay just to get away when things are tough, right? Or somebody says something wrong. I've said simple things to kids like, "Hey, you're six foot two. You're in sixth grade. Typically, me one of the tallest kids on the court." You get me one rebound a game. That's really not acceptable, especially if you're playing pretty much the whole game. I've got kids that leave. I've got kids that leave, and the parents didn't tell me. They didn't say anything. I just looked at them at the individual one day, and the kid's gone. And I got to hear it from somebody else. Well, when you do that, you know, when you do that, that right there is building, and you're starting to build that 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 groundwork for not being able to be coachable. Uh, and then what happens with that? The kid gets the kids gets that reputation, and the parent gets that reputation. So if Brian is coaching at the next high school, and that kid transfers, he's mad, and the parents mad, he's <laughs> mad over there. The conversation's still gonna be like, yeah, they left. The mom's not coachable, and the kid's not coachable. You're not gonna say, oh, okay. Yep, he's he's fine. Then we'll we'll let him, we'll just let him run the team too over here. It's not gonna work. So I think we're gonna we're gonna take a pause for the cause. We're gonna dig a little bit deeper into why being coachable actually really really does count for a coach and why coaches will opt for coachable at the highest levels of talent over marginally more talented versus coachable. Yep. So we're gonna get into that uh, when we come back. Here's the thing. Understand this. Wind sprints and a whistle can do a lot to correct behaviors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just keep that in mind. That's why we want, that's why coaches want to be included. So we're going to take a pause for the cause and we'll be right back at you. All right. Welcome back. So I want to put this bug in here and I need you guys to understand this. I need the listening public and possibly any players that are listening. We hope the players are listening. Um, we need you guys to, to really take heed. Understand this. Omaha ain't that big of a town. <laughs> and coaches all talk to each other. The coaches know each other. Um, some of the coaches grew up with each other. Some of them are family members. Um, you know, with stuff like Facebook, you're in Facebook groups with other coaches. Um we do joint work with other coaches. We have a, a, a coach down in Kansas. We're actually building some stuff out with uh, from a service standpoint. Um, coaches talk is, is, is what I really want to put out there. And coach Mo mentioned the team from team to team, to team, to team, to team, to team, to team uh, parents where, you know, there's always something wrong with whatever team the kid is on. And so the, the the objective instead of trying to remedy instead of trying to find a remedy to the solution a remedy to the problem locally it's it's outsourced to the coach or the team or whatever coaches talk to one another 
<laughs> if you get a star player that comes from another program, more times than not, that coach has a rep, has a has a, some kind of relationship with the other coach, and they're going to ask, you know, hey, because basically they're not even asking for the lowdown on your kid or the parent. They're just asking to see how what this kid's strengths are so they can evaluate it for the team. And invariably, it comes out, man, this kid's great. They ain't coachable. They don't listen. Mom and dad don't listen. And so good luck. <laughs> that's, 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 that's how the conversation goes. They don't listen, so good luck. And now the new coach has what the old coach, you know, the old coach's perspective. Now, here's the other side. It's not always exclusive because sometimes – We've had kids that come from uh, teams where they weren't getting coached or developed the way that they probably should have in our perspective, and we've had better outcomes. Some cases, it, it we didn't have better outcomes, and the other coach was exactly right. But we do, you know, it is a clean slate, but understand with that clean slate, there is some background knowledge too. Coaches talk to one another is what I'm saying. At the end of the day, coaches talk to one another. That's what y'all need to understand. Coaches do talk to one another. And so we talk about this coachable aspect of it. Um, the thing I'll say is this, and coach, Mo, you can jump in here anytime. Um, as we start seeing talent get higher, as talent gets to higher to that higher level, as you start getting basketball players that go from one level to the top, once you get to the top, the level, the gap between talent is super, super narrow. Unless you're talking about that transformative generational player. And we're not going to talk about the generational player because they are a unicorn. They're rare. They exist, but they are, well, unicorns don't exist, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> they, they are rare. You know, they're that bald eagle. They're that endangered species that you don't see that much. The gap between talent reduces. And so if the gap between talent is marginal, the thing that fills in that margin is whether this player is receptive to feedback, whether they listen, whether they're coachable. Coach will take a marginally less talented player that listens over a marginally more talented player that uh, throws the team into chaos on the sidelines. Is that? Is, is, am I on to something there, Coach Mo? Um, for all the old heads, remember we all remember Hoop It Up, right? Although and Hoop It Up was kind of going around the country, probably big here in Omaha because we didn't have a lot of stuff to do here in Omaha. Um, but it was big, three on three, um, and I mean. I mean, it was at Oakview, under the bridge, downtown, Exarbon. The teams I won with, and it's not knocking, not knocking. I had, I had super, super talented teams, and even teams we played where you had these guys that were like the top world, arguing, not being able to get along. They're getting knocked out in the first round. Clearly more talented than everybody. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I just got sick of it, you know, paying that money and doing it. And I went out and got some guys, we were talented. You know, we were talented, you know, we weren't the tallest, we weren't the fastest, we didn't jump the highest at the time, you know, we were still grinding street ball players, and we ended up winning, you know, twice in our division because we were kind of humble. We were humble, everybody played their part, everybody got along, everybody listened, we were coachable on the court with each other, like, hey man, like, switch play people, hey, uh, this matchup isn't going to work, hey, you probably need to set this game and let so-and-so come, it was coachable. We did that. We were able to do that as adults because we learned in, in the middle school and high school to that level, it's okay to be coached. It's okay. And maybe you are wrong. I used to come in with the mentality, and I would tell people this. Uh, if you, I don't know if you believe in this. If you speak something to an existence, it's just, you know, you speak it, keep speaking, keep speaking it, mm-hmm. it's going to happen. It, it, it messes up your thought process. If you keep saying, I suck, I suck. I suck. I'm not good. I'm not good. I'm not good. Eventually, your body and everything's going to start matching that, you know? And you're going to get in games. You're going to miss shots. Oh, suck. Oh, I can't get it. And then the coach isn't going to be able to reel you in. And so what I – what I, I, I used to use that excuse. I think a lot of us did. Mm-hmm. And I get there, I'm like, dang, I should have been on varsity. I should have been starting. Man, I should have that one – I should have that one division one guy. I'm better than that guy. I should have did that. I should have done me doing that alone shows me that there was something I was missing. Right. There was something I did not learn from my fifth grade coach. There's something I didn't learn from my seventh grade coach. There's something I didn't learn. It was, and, and a lot of it was being humble. A lot of it was take responsibility for what you're doing. And a lot of it was I wasn't doing the extra stuff. I, when the coach was telling me, hey, come in early, 
shoot some shots. Oh, I got this guy can beat everybody else. Right. I wasn't listening to the coach. You know, when the coach says, hey, man, you miss those free throws, work on them after the I got to go after work. I got something to do. I wasn't listening. You know, it was everyone else's fault. Even till when I was an adult, I'm like, you know what? I was wrong. <laughs> you know, I was wrong. Don't be that way. Don't be an adult and figure it out. Right. <laughs> figure it out. You are 13, 12, 14, 15 years old. Figure it out now. It's okay to have a bad game. It is. How do you handle it? You know, it's okay to ask for feedback from the coach. And it, 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 is, and it may be hurt. It may be harsh. It's okay. Myself and Brian, and we'll, we'll tell, you, tell you this, for parents and for players, we give each other feedback from a business standpoint. There's things that Brian might see that I didn't see. There's things I should see him and, like, and see that don't work. We've had many ideas that you guys will never even know about. We're like, man, that sounds great. On my end, and I presented to Brian, he's like, that, that makes no sense. I'm like, what do you mean, man? Like that, that makes no sense. We we probably shouldn't put all the kids in clown shoes and have them test their vertical today. And I'm like, oh, but it seemed cool at the time, right? No, it doesn't make sense. I accepted it because I looked back and he gave me the reasons and the steps why. The reason why this looks like this is this and this. I had to take it. And I'm like, oh, you're right. So ultimately, if you listen, ultimately, if you if you are able to. Take coach. And we're not saying every single time you're going to just be, yes, coach, you're right. You can do it. We're not saying kiss up to the coach. We're not saying be over the top. Don't be overly sarcastic. Just look at the coach. Say, okay. And then change it. Fix it. Change it. Come in early when he says come in early. Get on the shooting machine if you have access to. If he says it or she says it, go do it. Parents, if you think you don't like something that your kid's doing or you don't think it's, you don't, you don't know you're for sure how to coach and handle it, call the coach. Ask him. I don't know how to handle this. He's not going to class. I don't know if he told you. Oh, I never knew that. Me and the other coach will address that. You know? So don't just assume that this, this kid is has has got it. Don't just assume that as coaches we're picking on that kid either. And don't assume that, you know, we're not perfect, but don't leave us in the dark either. Because we may not know. A lot of us coaches may not even work in the English department at that high school. Yep. So I didn't know that he was failing English. A lot of us don't, you know, you know, a lot of us aren't at the lunch table when he's doing lunch. I didn't know she was at the lunch table throwing milk on people. We weren't there. But if you let us know, a coach can help you. So the consequences is you can lose scholarships. You can lose opportunity to play. You can lose playing time, period. You can be kicked off the team. You can be not desired by any coach in any part of this city. And again, like Brian said, the main thing we do talk good, bad, and and, and we do talk. Um, One thing I do, I coach, um, I I typically, you know, me and Hepburn talk all the time about players. We've been doing this a long time. Also, you know, I talk to Jeff uh, Kuhnman and uh, uh, Coach Q, and we talk about players. And it's simple things as, hey, I'm going to send you a player to train, Coach Mo, to do some agility work. This is what kind of personality they have. And I appreciate that because I want to know what I am dealing with. And so does Brian want to know what, I, what I'm dealing with. Good, bad, or can that, can that kid be coachable eventually? Um, and if they, and that kid's been through five or six coaches and five or six say uncoachable, that's not good. Right. And that, 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 that's not good because, again, like Brian said, small basketball community. Even in your big basketball community, I remember, you know, growing up in North Carolina, we started knowing these kids. And we started knowing these kids. And let me tell you what, when you look at some of these NBA players that are coming in, they're doing knucklehead stuff, it's not the first time they did that. Right. That is not, that is not the first time they did it. And the, and the reason they got to the NBA were they were the ones that slipped script, through the cra- uh, crap that are, they were so talented, you know, that their talent – and being seven foot, I mean, that got them the opportunity. Now, are they NBA champions? A lot of times not. <laughs> you know, they may just be on a roster. And you'll see some of these guys where you're like, man, you remember so-and-so that was out of this world and could play in great way? And you're like, what happened to him? And you'll look him up. <laughs> you'll see the news. A lot of undisciplined stuff. I don't want to talk to the coach. Walking out on practice, not showing up. 
not being a good teammate. And that stuff started back when they played for the Y. That stuff started when they played for the AAU team. That stuff started when they were in high school. And it just turned into an adult stuff. And it ended up hurting that kid ultimately. It hurt him ultimately. And here's the thing. Like we talked about, that mar- that, that marginal gap. A coach would rather take a kid that listens and is slightly less talented than the kid standing next to him, but this kid who doesn't listen, the kid that's more talented doesn't listen to him. The, the, the gap narrows between talent. And so you might even have that transformative kid who is a generational prospect who just never got over themselves. They make it to that highest level. And then now, instead of parents talking about what happened or – Fans talking about what happened. Now it's sports commentators talking about why this person can never get over the hump, why they can never get out of their own way. You see Skip and Shannon arguing about it every more every day of the week, um, saying this player has all the all the raw tools, but they can never make it. It never clicks for them, and they're their own biggest barrier because they bounce from team to team to team to team to team, even at the highest level, because they can never find a place where it fits in. I have somebody very specific in mind, and I'm not going to name drop that, that individual. Um, but um, it, it's, it, it, I, it sounds like I re. <laughs> um, they can really handle the ball really well. Really well. They, they, they are a great gen- ball handler. They can. They are professional. They, 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 <laughs> are, they are transformative generational. They're transformative generational talent, um, and they've made it to the highest stage. But um, whether they get back to that level, it's going to remain to be seen. Hopefully, I'm really hoping that it does because it's still one of my favorite players to watch on the floor in the flow of a game. But um, you know, people all around, all around the league, and even in outside the league, all these, all the talking circles are talking about what there's something upstairs that's not connecting. It, it, it was funny you bring that up because I was thinking about somebody that used to play for the Steelers that plays football that is not in the league right now that's really, really, really talented. Yeah, and keeps getting name dropped as, as, as a potential, and then it somehow and never manages to work out. Yeah, so there's that talent above me, but just, I don't want to touch it. It rhymes with clown. <laughs> it rhymes with clown. It rhymes with clown. How convenient it rhymes with clown, and they don't want to touch it. Yeah. And they, they don't want to touch it, and that's that's not that's not good. And as you, and as you, as you see, even... If you look at, I remember watching the Michael Jordan documentary and stuff like that too, and he talked about certain players he played against and those kind of things there. Even within those runs, and you played the other teams, there were teams that couldn't get over the hump because they had players that were ahead of themselves, and they're worried about their fame, and worried about their stats, and worried about those kind of things there. And coaches are like, I don't really want to deal with this for a university there. And there's a lot of in the game now, like, that's great. You have a lot of stats. Mm-hmm. I don't want to deal with you. <laughs> I don't want to deal with you. I don't want to deal with you. So I'm going to take this other person. You think, and we can't mention this, you, you think Robert Ory cares about, <laughs> you know, uh, or cares about so-and-so that is on the top 50 list, and he's, you think he cries about them being better than him? He has seven rings. Yeah. He has seven. He's at seven championship rings he's living comfortably he's good he's gonna go down in history from crossing that finish line sometime was he better than the top 50 players not even close but do i want the guy on my team that if i say just hit the shot and do what i say because i think this works because i've seen you do it and he says yes coach and goes and goes and does it i want that guy Somebody wanted him seven times to do that role. That seven times he was that seven times he was coachable enough to be a good enough teammate to make the roster. That's what we're talking about. Yep. Um, there are plenty of superstars that that in passing they go from place to place to place to place, and there's never a place for them because. Um, and sometimes I don't even want to throw throw out a generalization like that because sometimes it's just it's just bad luck. Yep. But other times that bad luck is self generated. I've never, I've never heard anything negative about that guy. So I've never heard anything like that as a teammate. It's like, okay, 
Okay. I like this thread. So I think we're going to continue on coachable at the top level. And then we're going to wrap it up. So the last segment is going to be when you're coachable at that, when you're coachable versus uncoachable at that top level, we're going to get into that. Uh, take a pause for the cause and we'll be right back. All right, we're about to go ahead and cross this finish line. So we're going to talk about that highest level. And now we're going to get into a little bit sports talk radio, if you will. So we, we tried to avoid dropping names. We'll drop names because I don't think it's ever going to reach their ears. <laughs> and if it does, then we are doing some amazing things on this podcast. Please, please follow us if you yeah. reach your ears. Because this we want, is... We want to have you on the show. That'd this be is, awesome. This is the Ottoman table chat. <laughs> um High budget, high budget podcast. We have our Ottoman set up with the mics on either end, just <laughs> discussing things, um, chopping it up. Anyway, um, we we mentioned like Antonio Brown and what's going on with him. Where Mar, I mean, this guy is one of those transformative. He can elevate your entire squad kind of players. He can go pretty much on any roster and make it instant and. Uh, amazing transformative impact. Nobody wants to touch him. And it's not a cap thing where the dude's getting blackballed for his social stances or anything like mm-hmm. that. We're talking about a guy who is pretty, you know, it's been pretty apolitical, but been controversial. And there are controversial players in the NFL. There's controversial players right now that are on rosters. <laughs> um, why is it that you have this, 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 generational kind of receiver that was kind of on that hall of fame track just can't stay on the team and no team wants him. What do you think the, what do you think the X factor is? I think that, I think the X factor is, uh, you can't follow directions. Yeah. You can't follow, you can't follow directions and you're just, I'm, I, I, I hate to be, it, it's uncoachable. It's uncoachable. It's, not being that good teammate, it's just they ask people, and at that level, and you, you've had family members, I have family members that've played pro ball. At that level, people want to be, want to play, they want to win, they want to have be in a locker room with somebody that's going to be like, look, can he help me win? Yeah, but do I want to travel with this person? Yeah, do I want to, do I want to be in the trenches with this person? Are they going to let me down in a playoff game? and start arguing and changing the route that the coach said and say, you know, I know this go route is going to work, and that's what he said, but I'm just going to run a hook just for no apparent reason, and all of a sudden it's picked off. Yeah. And you're out of the playoffs because you just decide, I'm just going to go against what the coach said because that stuff probably happened when you were in Pee Wee League. Yeah. And it's never been corrected. In the context, and we're talking about in the context of the team, and here's the thing. We don't expect Antonio Brown to care about what our opinions are. No. And honestly, we are literally basing our opinions on what we've seen in the media. There could be something else going on. But, folks, we're sitting here. We're we're telling y'all that if you are in our our limited experience, uh, we're talking about, you know, professional players. If you are a player, and we're we're scaling it down to junior junior high and high school players. But if you're a transformative talent, but no coach wants to touch you, that's a you thing. <laughs> and that you thing could really honestly be the fact that you're uncoachable. You don't listen. On a football field for a receiver, an uncoachable receiver is a receiver that doesn't run the route. They don't know the playbook. We've seen it where, you know, we, we're college football fans. Hey, this player ain't on the team anymore. What happened? He couldn't figure out the playbook. He didn't listen. He went out there and he was he wasn't running the right routes. He was in the wrong place. And on the football field, being out of position can has huge huge implications. You know, in 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 basketball, being out of position could cost you two pointer, three pointer, maybe even four points. Mm-hmm. Football, since the scoring opportunities are less frequent in football. Um, you being out of position could be the difference between you winning the game by 21 points and you losing the game by 21 points. Um, well, I, I, and I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm a, and we're both, it's funny, we're, I'm a big Florida Gators fan for football, and Brian's a Nebraska fan. We played each other in the national championship game. 
uh, was this 95? Yeah. 99, 95. Then Florida came in, and we had a lot of guys that go to the NFL, and we were, we were the favorite because we were one of the first spread offenses, and we had, you know, there. Now, what Nebraska did was stick to the game plan. We tried to match Nebraska, I remember at that time, and tried to match them and try to start running the ball at the gut. We didn't have running backs like that. We didn't have a line. like Our line was set to pass block, and we started doing that. Nebraska had Tommy Frazier. Tommy Frazier listened to coach, and I'm going to tell you why. Tommy, and you can admit this, Tommy didn't have the best arm. He didn't, I mean, he wasn't, I mean, he didn't, he wasn't throwing 400 yards a game or those mm-hmm. kind of things there. But his coach said, Go do what you've been doing all season. Run the ball. If the short dump off is there, you're good. Run the ball. And they ran all over us. Mm-hmm. They ran all over us and beat us. And I can sit here and admit that. I said, that's coachable. Yeah. He didn't do anything outside of what Tom Osborne said. That's coachable. A lot of our – I remember reading a lot of stuff within having that locker room at the Florida game. Players were doing stuff that were abnormal. Right. They were doing stuff that – they weren't supposed to do changing plays on the field. Danny Werfel talked about it. People running routes that they have never ran routes before doing, which was getting him hit. But it was like, we've never ran that route on the third down. We've never done that. Thing. And they got crushed. Yeah, we came back and won the next year. Yeah, we came back, you know. But at that time, on the biggest stage, you saw a team full of uncoachable kids get bombed, <laughs> you know, there. And so what that is, that is something that never was addressed before. Right. And on the big stages like this, you're going to be marked in history. In those games, it's like I was part of the team. They got crushed because I, people might not know individually, I changed the route five times. Yeah. <laughs> I, I walked down the field. I didn't run my route completely. I missed a tackle because I was standing straight up because when I, it worked for me in high school, <laughs> I called my own number when it was not my job to call my own number. Yep. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> you know, the quarterback can call his own number. The quarterback can call your number and get and get and, and call call a hot route and tell you to do X, Y, and Z on the field. But when you have a receiver that just decides, you know what? I'ma just run my own route. Now you're in trouble. You have a line, You have a you have a, a cornerback that says, "You know what? I'm gonna just play zone." It does. It does. Everybody else around me is playing man. I'm gonna play zone. How many, how, <laughs> how many years did Brady play? Tom Brady play for the Patriots. Many years. Yeah. Many many years. How many different receivers did he have? A, a lot. A lot. A lot. The constant was whatever the coach told Tom Brady to do, he typically did it. He he was coachable. But he had earned the trust, we talked about that, the trust, to change in the experience, to change his own plays for the betterment of the team because they trusted if he changed them, it was right. A lot of receivers, we don't know what happened. We don't know the age up there, but I'm going to guarantee you some of those guys probably was like, you know, I've been here two years. I'm going to change the route. And after a while, you, you start doing that, you miss a couple plays, because you get there because there was a time where they were winning, 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 had a couple of years they should have won. They didn't. There were things I seen in those games like he broke off the route. He did right, and that receiver was not heard of ever again. Brian always talks about it. What do you say in New England when when you when you do win a Super Bowl? <laughs> what do they do to you? Super Bowl with New England? <laughs> you could win. You could be the person that was responsible for most of their Super Bowl win. When your time is up in New England, <laughs> they give they 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 bring you into the office. Give you a watch, and then hand you a cardboard box with your name on it. Tell you to clear out your locker and leave your playbook at the front desk, and then they have security escort you out the door. Right. And that's it, because they're about the business of winning Super Bowls here. And so there have been dozens of Hall of Fame players who have walked through the Patriots, and when their time was up, they got their watch, maybe even a pin set. They gave them a set of pins. <laughs> Then they got a cardboard box and security will escort you out of the building. <laughs> Make sure you turn your playbook at the front desk. And then they move on. Yeah. And they're about the business of winning football games. And the thing that you won't do is you will not be uncoachable on a, the, 
Bill will break your heart. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't like the Patriots. I'm going to tell you, it's a visceral right. dislike Me for either. the New England Patriots. But I will tell you this. Belichick, he doesn't, he does, he's a sociopath about winning, man. If you ain't about that team, you ain't going to be on the team. He even looked at Tom Brady. He's been trying to get married to Tom Brady for two years. Mm-hmm. He finally got rid of him and said, you know what? You can go. Bye. But we're not even though you are our quarterback that's taken us to all these Super Bowls. If you ain't with the if you ain't with the game, if you ain't with the team no more, if you're not if you're not willing to be willing to listen to everything I say and do exactly what I say, I'm the coach. You can go, mm-hmm. and that's what he did. And it wasn't it wasn't bad blood or anything. It was just business. What we're saying is at that higher level, man, these people ain't here to play with y'all about. And this is for the players, and I'm talking directly. When you get to this higher level, man, these coaches ain't here to play with y'all about you want to have a you want to have a pout and temper tantrum because coach used the wrong voice tone at you because oh, you Lord. let the ball bounce off your head four times in a game, or you're the tallest guy on the court and you can't seem to fi- figure out how to get a rebound. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to throw it, you want to pout up, stick out your lip, and everything. Man, that coach ain't here for you. And here's the reality. It could be little leagues. I'm talking about you could be on little leagues. The coach ain't here for you to sit there and argue with them because they can find somebody else to do what they ask them to do who's not going to sit there and give them a bunch of attitude. And if you do it enough, I don't. they don't care how good you are. They will find somebody who can do what's being asked of them. And they ain't going to spend time playing around with you we talked about it before coach mo we talked about why you ain't you know for the parents why you ain't lavar ball nor should you want to be because lavar ball has kind of earned for the uh, for better or worse he's earned his right to be him on the sidelines and yank his kids and pull him and put him wherever he wants to because he has a son that's already in the league yep He, he, he he's doing he can say that no matter what you think about him you can't take away that. You can't take away that he has a sudden lead, and he probably has a number one or two draft pick and yeah. coming with another son, and that one plays pro, not the good, but he can do that. And we're not even saying his behavior is good. We don't like his behavior either. <laughs> right. But he's earned the, he's earned his spot at the table because the kids are so good that they could be – the kid's already in the league. He, there's nothing else to prove, even if the other sons get blackballed. Right. He already has a son in the league, man. That's it. There's nothing you can say to that man. He can go out and 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 as long as people are willing to tolerate his presence, he can be he can be that guy on the sidelines. You ain't there. Your kid ain't there yet, and we're trying to get them there without all the other we'll call it behavioral overhead, which is the behaviors that are so 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 egregious that people are forced to look the other way in order to accept your player on the team. Right, and that, and this you, you hit it. You hit it just like that. It's like you at, at third grade, at fourth grade, at fifth grade. I mean, if I can't tell your kid to go get one more rebound without you getting bit out of shape, and without you mean mugging me on the sideline, without you yanking your kid, I've I've had parents physically come put their kid's coat on in a game and leave the middle of the game because they felt their kid could be in the game. It, you that it, it, you have a long way to go. You got a long way to go. And even talking of that, we talk about kids getting that you know getting that reputation. You know, their parents, you start getting that reputation. If somebody sees you do that in a game, parents talk to the other parents. They're like, I don't want that parent on the team. <laughs> you know, where we like the kid might be even okay, and they're like, I don't want that parent on the team. <laughs> you know? They don't want that parent on that team. Yeah. Okay, so I lied. <laughs> that's going to be our next segment. We got to touch on that real quick. And then I promise you, cause we got other stuff we got to get doing. We got to get going. We, we respect y'all time for listening to us. We're going to talk about that toxic, that kind yep. of toxic, uncoachable parent. Um, and we're going to get all into that. Um, we're going to take a pause for the cause. We'll be right back. Last segment, y'all. Thanks for sticking with us. We gonna get into the uncoachable, the the the, the example of the uncoachable parent. If you have one of these traits, then you might be him or her. Um, so we're talking about the uncoachable parent, and then we're gonna talk about we'll we'll put in the the passive aggressive and then the aggressively uh, uncoachable. Passive aggressive. I don't hold my kids accountable. I never want to be the bad guy. Um, 
you're forcing the kid to, to compete or play at a level that they are not ready for uh, because you might have had some kind of success in your days or whatnot. Um, and because of you, because you think through osmosis, your kids going to get it. And so you never, you never do the things required. You never, you never have the, the, the conversation with your kid. You never take an honest inventory of what your kid's skills or ability is. And when it, when it comes down to it, you don't hold the kid accountable for their behaviors on and off the court. So you might have a young man or young lady that is out on the, uh, on the basketball court, um, on the sidelines, they distraction. They distract and they teammates. They're not, they're distracting, they're distracting their teammates. They're not focused on basketball during basketball games. Um, they are talking about unrelated things in practice. They goofing around. They constantly are playing around, um, you know, to the and there's always playfulness in basketball. We try to keep it light and fun, but we're, we're talking about playing around. Like you're doing, you're wrestling around, doing things that might get somebody hurt or injured. Um, that's what we're talking about. The passive aggressive and the parent never holds the kid accountable for the behavior. And we're not talking about just on the basketball court. We're talking about off the basketball court too, where the kid has a bunch of behavioral issues that the parent never addresses, or they want to be the good guy. And so they leave all the discipline to the other parent. And the other parents a bad guy, and then they outsource that to coaches too. So not only do they expect the other parent to be the bad guy, they expect the coach to always be the bad guy. That's kind of the passive aggressive. The aggressive parent is the one that sits in the sands, bad mouths other players. They also refuse to hold their kids accountable, but instead of not holding them accountable, they actively blame other people for their child's piss poor behavior and piss poor attitude. There's kids out there tripping people, pushing people down. Um, off the court, the kid's a bully. Never, and uh, when when uh, confronted, parent never wants to hold... It's never the kid's fault. It's always somebody else's fault why their kid is a bully. And when other adults address the behavior, um, it becomes the other adult's fault why their kid's a bully. Um, you know... We talked about bad mouthing. We were very serious about this. We've had parents that sit up in the stands and will actively bad mouth other players on the team during the game and then wonder why the other parents in the team or on the league don't want them around. And then it ends up becoming, well, none of the other parents like me because of blah, 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 instead of none of the other parents like me because I sit around and talk crap on their, their sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, whoever. And that's those are the and so we're we're talking about very specific cases, but these are the cases that we've seen. This is uncoachable parenting. That is uncoachable parenting. We talked about the love of our ball, and you know neither one of these kids are any of the ball boys. They ain't up there yet. They ain't even close. They barely making rosters. They're barely making our roster, but. In some way, they think that they're the most important person on that bench, and um, they're not looking at it from a context of a team. They can't see past themselves to think about what the team needs. That's what we're talking about. So, Coach Mo, how can a parent become? How if somebody's listening to this and saying, "Man, I might have done. I'm not proud of that. I might have done some of this." How can a parent be more coachable, man? Well, here, here's the deal, you. You gotta let us. You gotta let us coach. You, you signed up for this, so if you signed up for, I, I guess I, I, let, let's take it back for a second. If you don't want to coach and you didn't sign up to be the coach, that means you are trusting whoever in front of you to coach your kids. You get better at that sport. That means you may not have a lot of knowledge of that sport. I don't have a lot of knowledge for at, at tennis. If I sign my daughter up for tennis. She's got to learn from the tennis. I'm expecting a tennis instructor to teach her how to hit the ball with a racket, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, and that she's got to can play pretty good at a point, and hopefully she can get, you know, competitive at it. Um, if I feel it along that way and I get a, a coach a chance, then I can say something. But if you don't know the sport really, you sign them up for doing it, and the first week or two, it's cr criticized, 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 that's a problem. That's uncoachable. That's an uncoachable parent. That you're not letting the coach coach. When you start talking, then it gets very, very, very detrimental. You get down to the trenches and you start 
saying it in front of other parents. Right. And then the other parents who have trusted this coach, two reactions happen. These are cases that has happened over the years. They tell me, or they tell the other coach. And now I'm looking at you. Now we have this weird, you know, thing where it's like, I wonder why this person, now I see why they're staring. Now I see why they snatch your kid up right after the game and they don't stay with the huddle and shake hands or that kind of thing. And I'm like, but guess who it ultimately hurts? It's the kid. The kid sees the way you're reacting. And I, I'm going I'm to tell you, I'm going to put you on a secret. Kids just want to be out there with their friends a lot of time. Right. They just want to play ball. They just want to shoot the ball, play a couple of games here and there on the weekend, and have fun. Even at the high school level. Get that game in, get a couple practice in. They want to have fun. It should be fun. It's not fun when they got to look over their shoulder because they're like, oh, boy. Here comes mom talking bad about my friend, Bobby. Bobby's the best player on this team. Bobby, and we all know it. And we all know it. Brian, let's keep it real. You know who the best players are on the team. And so, and the kids know it. Right. And so, I'm telling that kid who probably has played more games, has more experience, probably played AAU, probably did something like there. The reason why they have the ball in the clutch, they've had more experience taking that shot in the clutch. But for you to sit on the sideline and, oh, I said, oh, of course he's pulling my kid out. Look at that. Oh, man. There it goes. Putting Bobby in there to take that shot. Can't believe this. I mean, oh, boy. What, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I mean, go out. Oh, man. And we hear it. We're told and we hear it. And the thing is, coaches are human. I'm pretty tough. I can take a lot of stuff. I hear, though, my ears work very well. And I see your body language, and I see what it's doing to the kid. And when that happens, and you get that kid doubting, right, and it makes it weird around the other kids, it's really hard for that kid to progress in any system. I don't care if they're playing for a rec team, let alone a U team. You can be very detrimental doing that to your kids. Well, here's the other side of it, man. We, we want to have a great experience for everybody involved, right? And so if there is one parent that is the, the uncultural one parent – that is making it tough, life tough in the stands for the other parent. Or let's be, let's keep it real here, where the other parents are sitting there like I might end up catching a case behind this parent. <laughs> we there's a high probability we gonna ask you not to come back anymore, and we'll ask you to turn the kids' jersey, and they're off the team. Um, you know, and you can go take all that stuff somewhere else, and you can talk bad about us somewhere else, but we still do talk to each other. Um. But if, you know, we want everybody to have a fantastic experience, win or lose, you know, it's supposed to be about fun and about getting the kids better and getting, you know, and losing as much a part of the game as winning. If you go out and win every single game, um, the, the chances of your, of your learning those valuable skills to get better or pushing your, put your kid getting, pushing themselves to get better is very thin. So we want a kid to, 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 uh, experience a loss every once in a while to see what it feels like so they can have something to get better with. The reality is this. If you are that parent that's sitting in there, sitting in stands and making it an unenjoyable experience for the other spectators, the other people that are invested in this, in the other kids on the team, because you're bad mouthing them, we're going to ask you not to be around. I don't care how good your kid is. I don't. Yep. I'm the business manager. Um, Mo, Mo's had it. Mo, Mo has a great relationship um, but sometimes I, Mo has a great relationship with some parents, but sometimes I'll say, this person needs to go. And Mo, Mo vouch for that. <laughs> I've said, this, per, this kid or this parent, I don't care how much money they pay us, they need to go. Yeah, okay, because it, does, it doesn't benefit anybody. And at, it, at the end of the day, no one should get uh, disrespected. I'm the, no coach should. No parent. If we're not really disrespecting you as a parent, if we're not disrespecting the kids, the kid, and, that, and I guess the one thing that probably bothers me, everything you talk about is – is that is talk to us about it. Talk to us about it and don't, and don't be reactive about something that we don't know about. Um, like I, you know, I, I got accused one time of yelling at a kid and, and, and it's funny because, um, I mean, coach Hep were in Dallas last year and we were, we were watching AAU games. If you think anybody yells up here, <laughs> year, 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 I want you to go to a competitive top level AAU game in a gigantic city. They are literally walking on the floor in the ref's ear every trip up the court, screaming at the top of their lungs. And guess what the refs do? 
All right. And guess how the players react? Fine. Because they're trying to win and they're trying to do whatever. And that's just the way that person goes. They're, they're playing not, for scholarship. Yeah, yeah. This is, they're, they're not worried. They're, if the coach is, is, is getting them there, they're fine. They didn't disrespect the refs. They didn't say they're going to fight the refs. They didn't say they're going to you know, throw a chair at the parents. They didn't say anything. They're just, that's the way they are. My voice carries, and I was going to think there. And for the first time, I was like, wow, you just don't get it. <laughs> so you just don't get it. Your kid has a, like you said, there are things that happen in practice, and when you're not around, when we spend a lot of time with your kids, that you have no idea on why they're not having playing time. And you just made them uncoachable because you approached me in front of them about something that you could have just called me about. <laughs> you know, we have we have little kids on the team. I mean, be honest with you. Yeah, we'll see our fair share of Naruto runs. If you're Naruto running down the court in the middle of a game when the game's on the line, you can't you, play. You, you, you're about to get barked at. <laughs> you're about you're about to get barked at because we don't had this conversation. We don't talked about this before. Right. We say it's cool in practice or if you're screwing around, but in a game, get your get. Move your arms. Get your damn hands up. Don't put your <laughs> arms behind your back. Okay, so your kid's about to get barked at. I'm sorry. Right. Um, because they should know better. And th- they have to hear our voice over your voice in the crowd. And their team yelling at them. They got to hear us. And so, yeah, it's going to sound like, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and other times, coaches are human too. I done told this kid 12 different times in 12 different ways. Hey, man, don't let the ball hit you in the face. Grab it. Use Pay your attention. Hands. You're the tallest guy on the court. There's no reason why you have one rebound for this entire for the entire tournament. You got one rebound, and your job is to go out and get rebounds. So you guys got to be real about it. But we want a pleasant. We want an overall pleasant experience for our parents in the stands. So if you're that parent, um, and you know if you within earshot of this. I hope you kind of take stock of what we're talking about. If you're that parent that's sitting around bad mouthing other children to elevate your child, you go and we and it gets back to us. You're gonna be off. You're gonna be off the team because we're gonna talk. We're gonna call a parent meeting once. We pull you aside once or twice. If it continues on, you 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 up out of here because we're not trying to have a negative experience for our parents in the stands. Right. We want to have the best possible experience, win or lose, because losing is tough enough. Without, without having to sit there and listen to somebody talk bad about your kid, and we see it, we see it. Don't don't think, don't. It's a distraction. Your kid sees it too. Don't don't think as a coach, we don't see it. One last thing I want to throw out there because this is a very real visceral experience that sticks out to me. Girls, girls game, girls team last year had a parent. Now these are all beginning level mm. girls. All of speak them, on to it to a person. Speak on it to a person. Uh, my little girl, she had never played basketball before, and she went out there and did what she was supposed to do, what we told her to do. And there are other little girls that were in the same boat. We had a parent because their kid had uh, some experience that you know these other girls did not have. Now she had experience, but she didn't have any wins before. She didn't have many wins before uh, joining us, and she got better. And she was she was a standout player for us. But we had a dad come down and literally insult all the other girls and talk about, we going to get you around players that know how to do it in front of the other kids. Don't come back. That parent, that specific parent, don't come back. Because that's not what this is about. We are not about d- demeaning or belittling other children to elevate your kid, even though we all know that this girl was probably had more experience playing. There's no reason to put down the other kids who don't because we're not at that level yet. You, the, you know what you can do in those situations when you have, if you have those issues like that, you can coach. Yeah. You, you are always free to coach. You can go, go to the Y, go to wherever and say, I want to be a coach. But the problem is most of them won't do it. Get off your ass and coach and coach. And we actually have a program that will teach you how to coach. Um, I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, I dropped the price. I can't remember what top of my head what the price is, but it'll teach you how to coach from A to Z. Yeah. And the, well, I'm, I'm dead serious about it. There's a link in the show notes. Mm-hmm. You can go and sign up for it and it'll teach you how to get started as a coach. Yeah. But do not do that crap because that's not fair to those kids. Mm-hmm. And 
that's where we'll get we'll get fiercely protective over the other little girls on that team because no child needs to be put down like that. And I don't care, you know, I love, you know, well, I love my kids, I love my kids. Yeah, so do other parents. Everybody loves their children, but there's no reason, there's no excuse for that kind of behavior after a game, especially in a season where these girls are seeing it. Some of these girls have been playing for a couple of years, and this is the first year they've seen success. That is exceptionally ugly, man. And so, I mean, don't come. I'm dead serious. Yeah. If I see you, I'll tell you the same thing. Don't come back. No, it's not. It's not worth it. And it's not worth it. And we'll get rid of you. Yeah, we'll work with your daughter. You are not well. You're not welcome to any games really? or practices. You can you can stay out. You can stay away forever. I don't add. I don't add extra stress. <laughs> I don't know. It's just in, in, in my life dealing with people that don't want to do it for for the kids. Yeah, if you're not there for the kids, then we don't need you there. So um, I, 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 we're leaving on somewhat of a confrontational note. We love all of you, but if you are one of these uncoachable parents who who who, who thrive on putting down other kids to elevate your own, um, then there's probably no place for you in Coastal Athletics. I'm just being being dead serious with right. you. Um, so. If you're able to adjust that behavior, we, there's a spot. There, there's a there's a spot that's welcome for you. So, um, this week coming up, we got uh, basketball academy. Um, you know, we're still rolling with basketball academy got, coming up. Got our open competitive open gym, open and, gym. Yeah, and that and just stay tuned because that we have one more Monday for sure. But we're gonna uh, probably shift some different dates on that. So just. Stay tuned for the changes. We also will be adding um, an extra day for Basketball Academy. Stay tuned for that. That's exciting. Um, just give you guys more more stuff. Um, but please, that 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 the Dynamic Handles Camp. I'm, I'm telling you today. Today you have to sign up sign for that. Up it's going to be you're hearing it now. Sign up now. We cannot have a hundred people in there. We're trying to keep everybody safe, and we need we're to just, know who's coming. Once yeah. we get enough people, we're going to shut off registration, and you're just going to have to wait for the next one. Yep. So. Um, that's where we're at. Um, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, if it, uh, listen to, if you, if you're listening to us on iTunes, um, or whatever platform, subscribe so you can get updates about when we're posting new stuff. Uh, event, uh, as you'll start seeing offers for different programs mixed into the content of the show. So you want to subscribe for that. Um, you know, if you like what we're saying, leave us some feedback. We do have a little tab on there to donate to the show. If you really uh, appreciate the content we're making, donate to the show. Let us know the the donations go for our operations. Helps get uniforms and stuff for the kids, um, uh, and and helps pay league fees for the kids and whatnot. Um, that's been a that's been a recurring and a very uh, that a very uh, challenging cost to meet. And so any any you know you'll see the support link. Um, on Anchor especially, you'll see the support link. Click there to support the program. Um, like I said, we're on iTunes. We are on Google Podcasts. Uh, eventually, I think we're going to be on Amazon Podcasts. Whatever platform you're listening to us on, subscribe to the show so you can know when we post. We create new shows, new content every single week. Um, and we talk about basketball-related topics, and we're going to be expanding our focus Um couple things I'm waiting on, but we're going to be starting to add guests and things like that so you can hear other voices besides our own. Um, any sign, Any parting thoughts? Um, my thoughts is, you know, um, let your kid be a kid. Enjoy the, enjoy the journey. Um, by enjoying the journey, that means let them be coached. If you sign up for a co- uh, team, let them be coached. If you find something you don't uh, agree with the coach, let's figure it out. Let's talk and let's work through it. Kids. Your thing is be coachable, listen, take feedback, don't do the boo-boo face, figure it out. Just know, I always tell kids, you don't want to look back at this experience 15 years from now, 10 years from now, whatever, when you're an adult, and say, I should have listened. I should have did it. I should have did. I, I, I should have been coachable. I should have tried. Exactly. So <laughs> with that, we'll sign off. Um, if you're in a format where you can click the thumbs up, if you like what we're doing, click the thumbs up. If you don't like what we're doing, click the thumbs up twice. <laughs> or, no, click the thumbs down twice. All right. So if you if you like what we're doing, click the thumbs up once. If you don't like what we're doing, click the thumbs down twice. You got right. that? All right. All right. Uh, lastly, um, as you see, we have a, a donation going around for one of our uh, one of our uh, players. Uh, players came to a lot of our camps. He's a brother of one of my current players. This is Jeremiah. 
Um, Jeremiah has uh, got into a very bad car accident, uh, suffered some critical injuries right now. Um, we are still taking donations for that link for the family. Please go. Um, anything helps. It can be, you know, a dollar. Anything helps that family. Um, they're going to they need it. We're really pulling for him. Uh, a lot of prayers going to his way. But really check this out. Uh, really check it out and donate. Uh, lastly, also, we're also looking for sponsors. Yeah. Uh, that will be down in the show notes, too. Um, and I'll tell you, there's different types of sponsorships, there's different pro- levels. You'll get to see in there. But please, we would definitely appreciate sponsors. We have two great teams going into So We practiced last night. I'm like, man, I'm happy. I'm so happy about these teams that are coming through this season. Maybe the best teams that we've ever had that's coming in here, and we're excited. But also, there are kids that are, are going to be on those team that may need uh, may need a little help. And, and honestly, I looked at some of the prices for some of the tournaments this year. Uh, they've went up. We need help. We need <laughs> they've, help. We need they've, help. They've, they've went up, and we, I don't know if people are just doing that because things are going on. But we need help. But we need help with that piece of it. So yeah. we need to get that money in the door. Um, there's programs. There's podcast program sponsorship opportunities. There's team sponsorship opportunities available. Both exist. We'll put the link in the show notes. That's what we got for you guys. Um, you know, thank you to everybody who donated to Jeremiah. Man, we blew through that goal and we're set. And we're we're going on. We're going to continue powering through. We're going to continue pushing this because um, the family needs also support that you guys are willing uh, willing to give. And if you can't donate, if you can't donate, I'll put the link to the Facebook post in the show notes. Share the Facebook post. If you can't donate, share the Facebook post. Okay, Um, so that's what we got. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back at you guys next week. Talk to you later. Coach Bo and Brian. Peace. Peace.